Hello, this is Ann Denton from Paducah, Kentucky, Quilt City, USA, and we're going to be talking about Ann Hazelwood's Wine Country series. You'll see her first book here today, and uh, there's a special running right now at AQS. If you go online, you can see that deal and purchase all five books if you don't already have them. I started reading Anne's books. Uh, I was on the board with Anne at the Quilt Museum, and of course I've known her from the quilt shows, but to have a person that I was personally contacted or connected with write a series of books, I was very excited to read them. So I started with the first book that she ever wrote, and I've, read, I've bought and read all the books that she has ever written. I did make the terrible mistake one time with Anne and Murdy Schrader and I sitting at a restaurant and a woman came up and said, oh, I'm just enjoying your book so much. I'm at the such and such. And I said, well, I was awfully sad that the husband died. And the woman said, what? I didn't get that far. And Anne's face was, her eyes sort of lit up and I thought, ooh, I talk too much. But anyway, I've enjoyed the books and I think they're great read. They have interesting things for quilters and I've enjoyed them very much. If you've read the first 100 pages, you know that it's about Lily Rosenthal, who's one of four sisters, and she lives in the hill country. Or, uh, she lives on the hill in St. Louis, and uh, it's an Italian district, lots of good bakeries and shops. She's recently been laid off from her job as a book editor and is contemplating her next step in life. She has no children, she's never been married, but she has a great fondness for red and white quilts. She collects them and it's a very important thing in her life. She even has in her two bedroom apartment, one bedroom that is solely dedicated to her quilt collection. She keeps very meticulous records on her quilts, where she bought them, what she purchased them for. And if you all collect quilts, what kind of efforts do you make to catalog your quilts and keep good records on the quilts and their provenance. I think it's a, a wonderful thing that the quilting world has come to life in recognizing the value of these quilts, both old and the new forms of quilting. If you go to St. Louis, to the Hill, you can go to Viviana's Grocery Store. My husband and I go there often when we go to the St. Louis Cardinal baseball games. It has wonderful Italian foods, dishes, and wonderful selections of wines. There's also wonderful bakeries. Uh, baseball Providence there, Joe Vergiola grew up on the hill. And there's a wonderful church that has a bronze of a boy and a girl who were coming to the church as immigrants. And that same statue is in Italy, and they face each other uh, across the many seas. Lily has a shop that she goes to often on the hill run by a lady named Rosie. Rosie has antiques, littles, and also furniture and red and white quilts occasionally that she will hold back for Lily to have an opportunity for first refusal. There's a murder that occurs and Rosie is shot and killed and the cash register money has been stolen, but the objects in the store were not. They assumed that it was just someone trying to get some quick cash. There's a, a woman who worked in the store named Melanie who seems to be suspicious and she is very, very concerned because Rosie was such a nice woman and now what will happen with her shop? As she goes out to Augusta and goes through the wine country, she mentions different restaurants where she frequents um, the restaurants have some wonderful ones. In Augusta, there's one called Silly Goose and Kate's Cafe. And so she will stop there and get sandwiches. Or when she visits with Carrie Mae, they might have sandwiches and eat in Carrie Mae's shop. I'm sure that you all have small places like that that you go to when you go to antique shops or you're visiting even in Paducah, Kentucky at the quilt show. We have a ton of wonderful little restaurants and places to get shops, uh, specials to get to wonderful meals. And then we have all sorts of vendors on the parking lot who serve typical parking lot food, barbecue sandwiches, ice cream sundaes, strawberries that sundaes that the Boy Scouts make and sell. And I'm sure that um, those bring back memories to you all too. 
Don't forget to be thinking about your recipes to sign in and have for the drawing to get an autographed copy of Anne's book. The red and white quilt that you see behind me belongs to AQS and it was made by Linda Baxter Laszlo and it was quilted by Judy Mazin. It's called Goose in the Pond. This is a wonderful red and white quilt. I'm wearing a red shirt today to complement this red and white quilt and I think Anne Hazelwood would be proud to see red in any form. I hope that we will be able to show some other red and white quilts in the future that have been made by people. What is the favorite kind of quilt that you would collect if you had any choice of collecting a type of quilt? One of the things that is mentioned um, that Lily has a quilt that had matter fabric. And I never heard that term. If anybody knows exactly what that means, I hope that they'll tell me and we can announce what that is on the air. Lily and her sisters are very close and they communicate by uh, online emails and text. One of the nice things, if there are nice things about this self-quarantine is that we're enjoying things together. As I mentioned earlier, I've had more contact with my two sisters in the last two months than I've had in years. We contact each other almost every day with just a snippet on uh, an email or a text. And these books, all of the people across the world who have read these books and sharing our ideas and things that we feel about these books kind of brings us together. And I think that it's one of the things that keeps people strong in the time of quarantine, not having personal interaction, but being able through Facebook and media to contact each other and share ideas. The sisters all have their own problems and their lifestyles and it's woven in and out the stories and uh, Lily has a very best male friend named Alex. Alex also works in the publishing industry and he's very helpful in being a sounding board for Lily when she's making decisions about what she wants to do in her life. He's very helpful when she's making moves, anything that she does, he's always there for her. And if you've had a good male friend like that or a female friend, a best friend in your life, you probably know how important that is to have them too. When she goes to her sister Lynn, who is a painter and runs a gallery or works in a gallery in St. Louis, she meets a man named Marcus. And Marcus is an attorney in her brother-in-law's law firm. And he wants to know and see Lily more often. At this stage of her life, she's really not interested too much in having much of a companion because she's so busy in trying to decide what she's going to do with her life. But Marcus is a big Cardinals baseball fan, as Lily is, and they do, do go to a baseball game together. And then he turns up and helps her making some moves in her life. When she finds out that the lady, Rosie, who owns the antique store was murdered, an attorney comes to her door and tells her that Rosie has left all of the contents of her store for first refusal for Lily to purchase. The building is not for sale. It's a, uh, Rosie was renting in that building. But Lily thinks about what she might do in opening an antique store. She doesn't want to live on the hill any longer. It's getting to the point that she wants to have more spaces and to be out in the wine country. She makes the deal and she owns the contents of the store. And in going through the contents, she finds a cookie jar and her friend Alex is there helping her pack to move the items. They open the cookie jar and it's stuffed with money. Can you imagine in your life if you came into a possession of a lot of cash out of nowhere, but there was a note that said to Lily, I hope she knows how to use this money wisely. Alex said, it's your good fortune, you found it, the contents are yours, happy day. When she gets back after the vacation with her sister celebrating their birthdays, she finds that yes, she is entitled to the money and it's about $50,000. So she now knows that she can afford to make this move. 
At the birthday celebration with her sisters, the sister in St. Louis, Lynn, gave her a red and white quilt from the three sisters to celebrate her birthday. She had gotten the quilt from Rosie months before when Rosie had called her and said, I have a quilt that I think Lily would love and I'll hold it back for you. So Lily was thrilled to death to get this beautiful quilt. As they were having their last dinner and visits together, they find out that Sister Lynn, when she starts crying, she tells them that she thinks her husband is seeing another woman. He's coming home late and he smells a perfume and she doesn't really know what to do. And then the oldest sister, Loretta, is upset. She said her daughter Sarah's getting married, but all of the wedding plans have left everyone in turmoil. So she makes the deal with Carrie Mae, and she decides to have all the contents moved. Alex, her friend, Lynn, her sister, and Mark, the new guy in her life, have all volunteered to come help and pay. Do you all think Mark's going to be a good, uh, good match for Lily in her life? He doesn't seem to have any baggage, but he seems very nice, and I think he will be a, a good fit for Lily just as a friend. It'll be anxious to see how this all works out. When Lily goes back to Augusta, after everything is moved in and she's checking things, she finds two odd things. She finds a toolbox that she had thought about giving to Mark because he commented that he liked to make and build things, and she'd packed it in the bottom of a box, but now it was sitting on the countertop. And it was also a Rolodex file that she knew that Rosie had used, but she had also packed it into the bottom of a box, and now it was sitting on the countertop. So she calls Carrie May and said, who else has been in the building? And Carrie Mae said, there's only two keys. You have one and I have one and no one else has been there. And she said, maybe it's your friend Rosie and she's trying to show you that this is a good move. It'll be interesting to follow through these, this series of books and find out exactly how Rosie plays into Lily's life and what will happen with her new life when she moves to the wine country. When she finds out that no one else has been in the store, and Carrie may suggest that it's the ghost of Rosie who's going to be helping Lily in her new life. In Anne's books, she always has a ghost who's very influential in decisions that are made in the books. They're fun reads, and I hope that you all will look into them. There's a Pinterest page that uh, is on the AQS Facebook page that uh, will lead you to that. And it has post of the famous salad that Lily made to take to her sister Lynn's party, a spinach salad with mandarin oranges and red onion rings and Italian dressing. And one of the great tips for that, if you're taking that salad somewhere, leave all of your items separate in little separate baggies. And when you get to the destination, then put them in a large bowl and add everything together with your serving tongs. If not, you'll have a, multi, a mushy, wilted salad. What is the favorite salad that you take to any affair with a, an office party or family reunion or any get together? Send in those recipes and one will be chosen and a prize will be given of an autographed book from Anne Hazelwood. I hope that you'll send in your recipes. You'll also see on the Pinterest page uh, pictures of the park where Anne walked in the area of the wine country, and you will see areas of the hill. So be sure and look up that Pinterest page. I hope that you all are enjoying these books as much as I have, and I hope that you will be sending in your recipes for a salad. I hope that you will be looking at the Pinterest page, and you will let us know what you think about the books too. The next time, read the next 100 pages and we'll see what is happening in Lily Rosenthal's life. Thank you, Ann Denton, Paducah, Kentucky, Quilt City, USA.